Hi guys and welcome back. Today is day 27 so we're going to be solving today's project which involves using a third party library called Pandas and we're going to be analyzing some avocado data. The data we're going to get from Kaggle and I'll show you what I do exactly with the data in just a moment but we've got a link in the description of this video that you can go to to download the data. Uh, so do that, uh, you need to sign up for an account and all that, but it's necessary, the data is really quite large, so we can't really include it in here. And uh, so once you've done that, come back and we'll show you everything you have to do. So Pandas is a data analysis library designed to make working with data a lot easier. So we're going to be using that here. Remember, if you're using REPL it, you don't have to install anything, just use it or import it and we'll show you how and then REPL it will install it for you. If you are having to install it because you're not using REPL it, then check out the project brief blog post linked in the description below and it has information on how to do that. Also in that blog post, we've got some information on how to use pandas and um, we're not going to cover how to use pandas in this video, but do go and read that if you've never used pandas before. And we've got there a bit of information on sort of how to use it, what data frames are, what series are and things like that. So check that out first and then come back here to watch the video. In this video, we're only going to be solving the project. The main reason for that is because the videos were getting quite long. So we wanted to make them a little bit shorter so they're more digestible for you guys. All right, so for this project, we want to know a few different things about the data in this data set. We want to know which region had the lowest average price for conventionally grown avocados each year and the same info for organic avocados. We want to know which region had the highest average price for both types of avocado each year. And we want to know the lowest all time price for both conventionally grown and organic avocados and the highest price as well. Why not? All right, once you've downloaded the source data and you are ready to start using pandas because you've read through that, then let's go over to REPL it and we're going to get started. The first thing to do is we have to import pandas and read the data from the file. So we're going to do import pandas as PD and then we're going to open the file which is going to be called avocado.csv and for the moment, we're not going to do anything because we actually have to place the file here into REPL it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the file from Kaggle using the link provided. And then I'm going to open it up in Excel so that I can get rid of some of the columns we don't need. But you don't have to do this. We're going to show you how to remove columns using pandas. So you don't have to do this if you don't have Excel. I just think it's a little bit easier and also a bit easy going for REPL it as well. So we don't have to paste in all of this data. So I'll remove everything that we don't need and keep only the year, the region, the price and the type of avocado. And I'm going to save this file, remembering to save it as a CSV. So once that's saved, I'll open up with my text editor, copy everything and paste it into a new file in REPL it. Now that we've got that, we can go ahead and create our data frame using pandas. Remember that a data frame, as discussed in the blog post, is essentially a table. And here we're going to create the data frame using read CSV, which automatically reads the file given the avocado prices file, which we've opened already and gives us back a data frame. Once we've done that, I'm going to show you how you can remove the columns you don't need or rather only keep the columns you need. Uh, so just type DF and then inside a pair of square brackets because you want to access the specific columns within the data frame, just type the names of the column. So that's year, region, average price and type. But notice that the average price column is not very Pythonic. Uh, so I'm going to rename it to price so that we can use that column name instead. Remember to change the name over when we are selecting columns as well, since that's going to change in the whole data frame. Next up, I'm going to split the data frame into two smaller data frame objects, one for the conventionally grown avocados and one for the organic avocados. So there's two types of avocado in this file, as you will have noticed if you sort of scroll through the file. And organic and conventional avocados are two different types and they essentially have very different price points. 
The reason I'm doing this is because all of the tasks we've set for this project treat organic and conventional avocados differently. And so by creating these two separate data frames that are only containing one of those types, we're not going to have to filter one set out constantly while working with the data. So I'm going to use the query method to filter by type, remembering to type type equal equal and then conventional as a string or organic. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the entire result rather than simply assigning to a new variable. By copying in both cases, we're creating new data frames uh, or copying the existing one. And then when we make changes to it, we are not going to modify the original data frame. So we're going to keep that one also in memory. Then in order to simplify working with these data frames, I'm going to drop the type column from the data frame because we've already filtered. We know that the conventional variable contains only conventional avocados and the organic variable contains only organic avocados. So we don't need the type column anymore. It should all have the same value in it anyway. Passing in place equal true allows us to modify the conventional data frame and the organic data frames instead of requiring a new variable assignment. Next up, we need to create a function that allows us to filter a data frame by year, thus allowing us to get the avocados that were sold in a certain year only. We're also then going to drop the year column since we no longer need it. Then I'm going to write a function to get the average selling price of avocados by year. Uh, so we're going to write that function, taking the data frame. And then I'm going to create a dictionary of averages where we'll store the average price each year. And then we'll use the data frame to get the different years that we have in our data set with df.year.unique. We can then iterate over those years, which will give us four different years in this data set, and then get the average price for each year by doing the filtering, grouping by the region, and then getting the mean. We'll then update our dictionary with the new year and the average for that year. Note that the year key that we're using to update here is the number and not the string year. So this will be 2015, 2016, 2017 and 2018. Finally, at the end, we can return the averages dictionary, which will contain for each year, a data frame of prices grouped by region. Then we can use that function to get the average prices by year for both conventional and organic avocados using our previously queried data frames. And notice that if we print those out, we get a dictionary where the keys are years and the values are the average price per region in that year. Now we simply iterate over the conventional averages dictionary and for each data set, which is the average price by region, we get the maximum price in that region. Then we'll also grab the location by querying by the highest price. But we have to remember that when we grouped by region, the region name became the index for each row. So that's why we're accessing the index zero here to give us the name of the region. Now we'll just print out that the highest price for conventional avocados in each year was the highest value that we retrieved from the data set. And we'll also add a location in there. So we can see that when we print that out, we get the different highest prices in each year. And we've also got access to the region, although it is displayed in the format that the data set contained, of course. If we want to show the lowest price, we can just copy that entire block and replace max by min, highest value by lowest value, and of course, change the string as necessary as well. So because we're going to want to do this for both conventional and organic avocados, I'm going to create a function called max and min values by year which accepts a variable and then runs those two loops. Notice that here I've called the variable df, um, but clearly this is a dictionary and not a data frame. So that's my bad. Do call it something better than that. Then we can just call those functions with the conventional and the organic averages, and we get both things printed out. Notice that this string has conventional avocados hard coded in there. So what I'm going to do is add a new parameter to the function called item type and use that in the string instead and then pass in whether it's a conventional or organic data set that we're dealing with when we call the function. Printing that out now shows the correct output. 
Notice that San Francisco had the highest price for organic avocados, which somehow is not all that surprising. Alright, I'll grab that function and move it up to the top together with the other functions. And now the only thing that's left is to calculate the maximum and minimum prices in total for the whole dataset for both conventional and organic avocados. And we can do that with something like conventional.price.max and conventional.price.min, organic.price.max and organic.price.min. And we can print that out. And now we get the whole data set analyzed and we have the highest and lowest prices. Know that when I'm running this, I forgot to change max for min. So just go in and fix that. And there we go. All right, so that's really it. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and quickly recap what we've written. We have a filter by year function that takes in a data frame and a year and it queries that data frame dropping the column and we end up getting back a data frame that has only values for that year. We use that in the get average by year function. Here we define an averages dictionary and then we get all the different years in our source data frame, which at the moment is just four. Then we iterate over those years and then we get for each year, the average price of avocados in each region. So that's what the group by region does. Then we update our dictionary so that we get the year mapped to the new data frame. We're using those down here at the bottom so we can get the conventional and organic avocado averages by year. And then we simply print those out using the function that we've created. And also we can use our original data frames to calculate the maximum and minimum prices for avocados in the entire data set. All right. Thank you guys for joining me. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time.